All right, guys. Uh, Cop Cutlass here. Um, I think we're ready. Uh, let's take the car back out to the track. I drove it today. There were some improvements for sure. Um, carburetor, I think, really likes the electric fuel pump. I went out today and romped on it, and um, it felt a lot better better in the mid range, um, where I think I was starting to lose fuel. Um, because my fuel pump just wasn't keeping up. But uh, now with the electric pump, the, f the constant flow is there. So I think um, that definitely helped it out. And I mean, uh, I also made a pump cam adjustment. Um, I got a picture which I'll add to this video because it'd be better that way. Um, the pump cam that I had on the primary side was barely riding on the pump cam arm, the actuator to the actual, uh, to the accelerator pump. So this arm here, and uh, never caught my eye. And uh, but I was fiddling with the pump cams, and um, and this is where I've, I've learned that the most aggressive cam doesn't always work out the best because you got to remember the accelerator pump is strictly there to fix a transition lean spot between idle. Wide open throttle, idle and cruise, idle, etc., etc., etc. The accelerator pump circuit there is just to aid other circuits during transition. So, um, I went to the blue pump cams, which I always thought was a little too aggressive because they're supposed to be the same as the pink cam, but the blue cam has a lot more duration of the pump shot. So my problem was if I would romp on this thing at idle and just go straight, it would have a pretty bad bog to the point where it should, it shouldn't do it. This thing should just be able to rev. Right. And what told me that it was lean was that if I would just pump the gas a little bit and dump a little bit of fuel. So pretty much just dump a little excessive fuel in the intake and then romp on it. It'd be fine. So that initial shot of fuel that I would dump down the intake would aid that bog before I romped on it all the way. So, and this is RPM, this is my hand tack. So, um, I went to the blue pump cams and it's pretty much gone to the point where I'm fine with it because how often am I gonna just rev it and let go? Very rarely. So, um, usually on the street, I very rarely will go from flat off idle. Like I usually bring the RPMs up if I'm gonna do a burnout just to you don't want to shock load your drivetrain either. So usually you got to bring up the RPM just a little bit to load up your gears, your suspension, get everything to kind of get ready to work. So very rarely am I going to do that. But today I drove it and I beat on it and it drove well. The AFR looked really good. Uh, we're cruising a little fat at about 10, 5, 11, 0, but that's with the exhaust on. So I leave it fat so that at the track, when I open up the exhaust, it changes dramatically opening up the exhaust so my exhaust is really really restricted to the point where this thing really is really really fat with the uh exhaust on it idles at about 13.0 which is is not bad under gear it spikes because it wants to go it's seeing you know cylinder pressure sp uh, spikes as the engine wants to go so it leans up a little bit more under gear but it stays good it's like 13.5 in gear and then um it, it uh, you know, you get on it and it fattens up and it stays where it should. The the engine should go dead fat when you go to wide open throttle. Um, and by that, I mean it, it shouldn't go towards the lean side. Um, it should be in the fat range like 11.5, 12.0 is what I've been told at least. And that's what I've always shot for. Um, so I think we're ready to hit the track and I hope that at least we can produce... As good as we've ran, if not better, if not, then you know what? It is what it is. This thing has seen a lot of action, a lot of street miles, a lot of racing, but we the last two times we've taken it out, weather conditions have not been ideal either. Last time when we were at Cordova, as the night went on and it cooled off, we started getting into the 11s, 11, we ran two 1197s, and then we ran out of fuel and ran a 1240. So, and then we scrambled all morning to get fuel, and we ran nothing but... 12 O's all day, every day. So it's actually not bad considering the weather conditions. The car ran pretty good. So I think hopefully 
This weekend, both our tracks are supposed to have weather in the low 50s. And hopefully we get a good day of uh, time runs in. And uh, we can get, produce something a little bit better. I'm, I'm really happy. Um, as always on the street, it's always misleading. But it felt pretty strong. It felt pretty good. As always, the car always feels good. But I think another couple things that we are going to try at the track is we're going to try to run it on the drag radials. I feel that I got a good set of drag radials now where I can actually test it. So we're going to drop the PSI down to 17 on these and go from there. Um, usually they're they're happy at about 17 to 19 from what I've been told. So we're just going to drop them down to 17. And uh, I'm going to add some bump stops. I'm going to do some measurements. So I think tomorrow that's what I'm going to do. And I keep on going back and forth. And you can probably ask JJ this. I probably drive him nuts. Just as I do anybody else, because I constantly change my mind. I constantly, constantly think and think and think. And um, I mentioned to him that I was going to change the converter, and then I thought about it, and then I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I'm like, God damn it, that's a lot of work, and we still got a little bit of time. So if we take the car out, and I really feel that I should go back to the other converter, then you know we got another couple of weeks before we, we hit rocky weather and the tracks close. So I'm going to go ahead and just take it out as is and avoid all the work and fiddle with a couple other little things that we can we can mess with like setting up bump stops at different heights for the suspension to play with that might that might help out you know eliminating some of the travel if the car bites good and the chassis moves out right I don't I may not need as much front end rise because the back tire is getting planted really good so uh, I might take out like a couple inches of travel out of this car so I'm thinking two at maximum would probably work from what I've seen uh, raising it up and obviously the back of the car raises up too, so you got to remember that because the, the body does separate on this car a little bit. Uh, even though the, the right rear still still tilts in, the um, the rear end still rises a little bit. So we got we got a couple things we can play with, and I think um, should be a good day. I'm gonna check the valves. I'm gonna tighten up the valve ash just a hair. I'm gonna set them back to where I had them in the past. So. I loosened them up too thou. I'm going to tighten them up too thou. I always ran them at 24. I tried 26. We didn't see any gains. Uh, granted, weather was not ideal. But it's easy enough to change it at the track if we feel that it, it's gone away. But originally, this engine was set the 24 thou at valve lash. I loosened them up to 26. So I'm just going to go back to 24. And, uh, and then we'll see about the timing. I got the distributor ready to rock. I'm going to bring my timing light, and we'll go from there. So I think um, we're all set. Uh, JJ wanted to try to have a track day. Uh, we haven't really talked a whole lot this week. Obviously, our project's done. Uh, you know, he's, he's busy, though, so he's got a lot of shit going on, too. So um, he said he was kind of willing to try to make the drive out here to one of my local tracks. Uh, so, JJ, open invitation if you can make it this weekend. We're going to have some great weather, and the one track closest to me directly west of me he knows where that is um is uh there everybody's shooting for mid 50 so it should be good weather he's looking to speed his car up as well so um we're losing time and we got to take the best uh we got to take what we can and i think that's what he was shooting for too because the other track close to him was hosting an event this weekend coming up so i think uh he was trying to come out here for some test and tune time. So either way, guys, I'm sure I bored you, but I figured I'd do an update on the things I did. I, I, this is the first time I've actually driven the car since Cordova. We brought it back. I started changing stuff and doing things right away, and it's been a couple of weeks, about three weeks, and I haven't driven it. So today was actually the first day I drove it. I did change my gauge. I went back to my old autometer. This one's still off by one, but we know we're in... It's the gauge at this point. It went up one. At idle, the difference between that gauge and that gauge is one. And I flip-flopped them from location, and they were the same. Now, I didn't flip-flop the gauges. I'm curious if I lose any pressure in my line. Uh, if anybody has some insight on that, I don't know. But either way, the difference right now is only only one. And um, so, yeah, everything seems to be happy. It seems to be running good. No major leaks. I've been babying a rear rail leak on this car. I actually have an expansion valve, or expansion grommet in there right now, uh, so the oil doesn't pool out, and I clean it between runs. And uh, 
that way they you know it won't drip and they won't yell at me so they uh you know it's courtesy if you do have something that has a slow leak either fix it or try to keep it clean check your car between rounds so that they don't yell at you and so you're courteous to other racers because run it as neat and as clean as you can and i've only been yelled at once for leaks with this car and that's why i put a diaper in it and it hasn't gotten any worse but my intake started leaking actually at, at Cordova a little bit and I babied it all weekend and, and I took care of it and they didn't yell at me. So it's all good. Uh, so I'll let you guys go as again. I'm sure I bored you already, but share, like, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Instagram as Copper Cutlass. I started doing videos on uh, posting them up on my Facebook for the page here, which is Copper's Garage on Facebook. Uh, and you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I hope you guys have enjoyed the projects. I do have a small block Ford I'm going to be putting together here very soon. So that's got to get done. Uh, so I'll let you guys go.